So in this Elden Ring video, I bring you a complete guide on how to get the Sword of Darkness and the Sword of Light. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps me out and if you like what you see and do want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Now before we get into showcasing these weapons, I just want to clear a few things up from what I myself have learned about the requirements for these weapons and also looking online as there's a lot of confusing and misleading information. So as far as I am aware from what I myself have looked into and what I've seen with my own eyes, there are three altars on this map. Now the way in which this weapon works is you go and find a certain sword, you take it to an altar then infuse it with either darkness or light. Now depending on what altar you come to first will determine what altars you will then have to take the sword to, to then infuse it with either light or dark. The only things I cannot confirm due to the way in which I got my initial sword is in fact what happens if you visit the altar of darkness prior to getting the initial sword used to infuse. Now my guessing would be if you go to where this catacombs is, where that altar of darkness is, this sword will be here for you to pick up. You will then have to take it to one of the other two altars to either infuse it with darkness or light. Now I've seen one other guide on this actual weapon and the altar he takes his sword to to infuse it with light is the first altar I went to where there was a sword there waiting for me. When I picked this sword up that altar then become redundant and just I couldn't interact with it from that moment forward. And it's in fact the place he found his sword is where I take my sword to infuse it with light. So yeah, like I said, there are three altars on this map uh, and depending on which one you visit first will determine the two after that you will have to take it to to either infuse with light or dark. But as I explained after we've looked at the weapons, you will no doubt get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So let's firstly check out these weapons so you can decide which one you want as from my understanding it's only possible to get one per playthrough. So we will start with the Sword of Darkness. So this one scales with strength, dexterity and that faith and has an amazing unique skill called Darkness. When you raise that blade, raise that sword, Put out that darkness energy in the surrounding area and this deals holy damage but also reduces that holy damage negation. Now looking at this straight sword in action I won't lie I'm in love with it or I was but that was until I sacrificed my sword of darkness to get a sword of light. So with the same attributes uh, this offers the unique skill of light where here you raise that sword above your head and lay down within that nearby area a potent sweeping of rays and man oh man does this look cool as heck and to be honest at first i didn't want to sacrifice my sword of darkness to get the sword of light but i'm happy i did on my next playthrough though, i'll just get the sword of darkness anyway but yeah guys the demands are so there are three altars on the map the first one you go to will reward you the stone sieved sword and you will then take this sword to one of the other two remaining altars to infuse it with either light or darkness now depending on which altar you go to will also determine the choice you get. The rotation of which you infuse your sword and the altars will differ to mine, well may differ to mine, unless you're starting the guide from fresh and following exactly what I do. But all three of these altars are in the same locations, so that at least won't change. But again, you can't acquire this stone sieve sword from any of the altars I visit within today's video leaving the other two remaining altars the ones you take this sword to to either infuse it with light or darkness. Also if you choose to infuse with light but want to then change it to darkness you can by going to the third of these three altars but you can't keep switching in between them you only get to use these altars once per one so if you choose to go with light first and then want to change it to darkness you can and vice versa. Well that's my understandings anyway. Okay, so you need to firstly do this and get out of the way. You need to be able to craft that hefty furnace pot. To do this, you need to find yourself the cookbook. So from the early game DLC Grace, the three paths cross. Follow this path I take to get this cookbook, people. Also, grab those furnace visages too as you need them to craft this.
So to craft this also requires red flesh mushrooms. These are found absolutely everywhere, guys. You don't need a tutorial on this. Uh, you then need the Ember of Mesmers, an infinite farm early game you can do from the Castle Front Grace. So from this Grace, guys, do as I do, run to this tent, pick up this uh, material, then simply reload this checkpoint, rinse and repeat to get as many as you want. You also then need the furnace visages, which you would have at least two already, as you picked them up with that cookbook recipe. But also, when the time comes, anyway, there's plenty in the area we go to when we need this recipe. And then lastly, guys, you need that hefty cracked pot. Now, I know the location of two here. Firstly, from the early game grace of Scorched Ruins, follow this short path to get this item. Another spot for this is a little later on within Bonnie Village, so follow this path from this grace point to get this guys. So you now have the ingredients to craft this, now just sit on them until we need them later on. Okay, so we are now going to grab this stone sieve sword. Again, this was the altar I went to and I got this sword from, but you can use any of the three altars I will cover in this video to get this weapon initially. But remember, if you use a different altar to get this stone sieve sword, it means you will then have to bring it to one of the other two altars to infuse it with your lightness or darkness. Okay, so from the Shadow Keep Storehouse First Floor Grace, follow the path I take on screen now to the secret pathway to Scooter Altus, passing by West Rampart Grace and then onto the Viaduct Minor Tower Grace within the ancient ruins of Ra.
Okay, so from here, guys, follow this path I take on the screen now. Now, there are a few pretty hard hitting enemies on your way, but nothing too serious. Now, as I run to where we're going to, uh, the doors, as you can see, are already open for me. That's because I've been here once before. These doors may not be open for you, so simply jump off that mount and open them to progress. You will eventually get to the raw ancient ruins east grace guys. Now from this grace follow the path I take on screen now, going past that big fiery dude and try your best to avoid his attacks because he more or less one shots you and we have to run right by him, almost beneath his legs. You will then get to the raw ancient ruins west grace. Now from this grace guys follow the path I take on screen now. Now there are some seriously hard hitting enemies on your way here to so have that flask at hand to heal. Some of these attacks are so hard to dodge. Okay, so you will come to this point guys and here there is an invisible bridge that you need to cross to get to that altar. Now here you have to stay dead straight. If you even go slightly off path you will fall. I died about 10 times doing this people. It's so annoying. Okay, so this is where I got the weapon from initially, that stone seam sword. Well, in another guide I saw, this is where the guy brought his sword to, to infuse it with that light. So if you got this weapon from another altar and haven't been to this one yet, come here if you want to infuse it with, I believe, light. 
Okay, so from here guys, we're going to go to the Altar of Darkness. This one's the easiest altar to locate as it's real early game. So follow these instructions that I recorded earlier from the Castle from Grace, where you go into the Fog Rift Catacombs. Okay, so to change this sword into the Sword of Darkness, you actually have to find the Altar of Darkness. This is located inside of the Fog Rift Catacombs. So to come here guys, load into the Castle Front Grace Point, just before the Castle Ensis, just like so. So once you are here, jump on your mount and come this way. Actually, call your mount, but don't jump on it. Come on, game. Okay, so it's going to be a little foggy down here. So if it's night time for you, it's probably best to change your time of day uh, to the morning so you can actually slightly see because at night time you can't see nothing. So just going to run this way, guys. Run past all these enemies. Just to be honest, I don't hit you too hard, so you shouldn't really have a problem here. But this is where it starts to get real foggy. Real foggy. So let's keep coming down this way, guys. I mean, it's, it's just a one directional path. It's linear. You can't go off the beaten path here. So let's keep coming down. And you will eventually come to, I believe, the door. You'll see two candles lighting up in the distance. Uh, where is it? Where, there it is, right there. So now, guys, you are in this catacombs. Now, there's a grace down here, too. So that's your checkpoint, basically. The Fog Rift catacombs. Now, I'm going to have to call this a lift because I've been here already, obviously. To be honest, I think it's the last time I died was in here. I think. Because I just killed the boss here and got some amazing axes. Okay, so. Come down. And simply come to the bottom. Now there's a few annoyed enemies in here too. You probably remember them from other catacombs <laughs> from the game. But here is your your grace point, which is the fog rift grace point. Come in here guys, take a sharp left. Just like so. And in here just run straight into this this pathway on your left hand side. Because that comes down and tries to crush your ass. From there from here just run straight on. Now don't normally one shot you but, uh, do you really want to take that risk? Probably not. Okay, so now guys, we're just going to go straight on. I'm just trying to not ignore all these enemies. And here, we want to take a left. And keep coming down, guys. And then eventually, what's going to happen is that's going to slam down. Once it goes back up, go forward. And just come back on yourself slightly like that. Now guys, just run. As soon as it slams, run. And there you go. Now from here, I'm going to have to call another lift because again, I've been here already. Okay, so how deep is that? Because I ain't making that of a jump. I ain't making that of a jump. Okay, so now stand on this and go down. Now this one's a little more puzzling. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but yeah, now in this room guys, kill these. Take out these three ads, they're annoying, they're a pain in the ass. In fact, these were the last people that killed me. Even the boss of this dungeon didn't kill me. But these most followers did. Okay, so. There we have it, I'm gonna just grab them. Grab that too. And then guys, we're gonna go down here. So this is where the good stuff happens. So in here guys, we're just gonna take a run to the left right there. Make a run for it, just like so. Then run out and run two to your left. So not that one, this one. And there we go, run back again. And then go and take this guy out. Now there's gonna be another guy behind him. Take both of these out. You fast little ninja, come back here. Okay, so now go up here guys, and we wanna take this uh, sorcerer out too. So this is where the tricky part happens. So when this slams down, you'll see when I get close. Now we need to jump inside that little box there. And it's pretty hard to, well it's not hard, it's just a pain in the ass. You just gotta time it right. So once it slams, just hold run and jump at the same time. That's probably the best bet. There we go, simple as that. Turn around and jump out on the top. Then guys, what you wanna do is jump on top of it, just like so, and run to the end. Once you run to the end, you'll see the 
uh, Auto of Darkness inside of this room right here. So I jump off. And here we have it, guys. So from here, examine Auto. Uh, and basically change that sword to Dark. Raise the stone, see if you saw it to the Dark. Yes, sir. So now you have, guys, the Sword of Darkness. Now, to actually exit the dungeon, you have to fight the boss. And I'll show you quickly where he's located because you can't just teleport out of here unless you die. And I think you still then go to a... I think, I'm not sure, but either or, guys. Jump down here. Just like so. We want to make a run straight across there. Straight across there. No, don't drink that there. Press the wrong button, you stupid idiot. Now, from here, go... Oh, shit. See, that's how much health it takes off you. I forgot about that. So now, guys, you're just going to call... Well, you won't have to call the lift. You go straight down. And I think the boss is somewhere down here. If I remember rightly. So here's the lift. And let's go down. Let's go down, people. Now, this game, is swall it swallowed my life the first time it came out. It's swallowing my life even more now. Okay, so here we have it guys, just down here is that boss room. So once you take the boss out, or if you die, simply teleport back to the entrance and you're good to push on. Okay, so two, remember guys, that may have been the place you got the Stone Sieve sword from initially. That means you need to take that sword to a different altar, the one we just covered or the one we we're about to cover, to infuse it with light or darkness. Okay, so on to the next altar. So from the Shadow Keep Main Gate Plaza Grace, this is a grace you get for defeating the Golden Hippopotamus. Uh, follow this path I take on screen now. On your way here, you take a secret path by unveiling a dummy wall and then onto that coffin, which teleports you to where you need to be. And this will lead you to the Castle Warren Hall Grace. Okay, so once you are here, you will notice a fire giant without any steam. The goal here is to wake him up, and you do this by crafting that hefty furnace pot and throwing it at his headed cage. Uh, so that's what you need to do, guys. So follow this path around the back of this building and scaling up to the top of it.
went up top, craft that requirement, that hefty pot, uh, and throw it at his head. Here he wakes up. What you now need to do guys is get behind him. I died the first try I'm doing this so I came back on my horse for a second attempt. Now once you do get behind him guys here is another altar. This is the one I use to indeed infuse my sword from darkness into a sword of light. But again these altars may differ depending on which altar you first grab that sword from, the stone thief sword. It is now down to you to visit the other two altars to see what's there for you in regards to infusing your soul with light or darkness. And there we have it guys, a complete guide on the sword of light and the sword of darkness. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.